Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Brittany Diego and today I want to get into the style evolution of one of the most influential artists of all time, Robin Fenty or as we all know her as Rihanna. Rihanna first burst onto the music scene in 2005 as the cute Caribbean girl under Jay-Z's Def Jam label and she instantly became a fan favorite. Now 15 years later, she has blessed us with looks upon looks at Met Galas, Grammy Awards, VMAs, and many more events. Plus, now she's the creative director of her own fashion labels. So I think it's safe to say that Rihanna has solidified herself as a style icon. Now let's explore her style evolution from where she started to where she is now. Let's start by traveling back to the beginning of it all in 2005 when she released Ponda Replay at 17 years old and she took the world by storm. Her image was sexy and cute with lots of crop tops and baggy jeans, but it was definitely generic. It was very much the style of that mid-2000s era and I'm looking back now on the fashion from those days and I'm cringing because we all thought we were killing it back then, but we now know that's not the case. Along with the crop tops, we saw her wearing halter tops and mini skirts on red carpets as well as her performances. Her style started maturing as she stepped into more glamorous styles when she dropped her sophomore album, A Girl Like Me. She also attended her first New York Fashion Week and took this opportunity to go full fashion girl on us at Condé Nast's third annual Fashion Rocks concert in 2006. She showed up in a silver Zach Posen mermaid silhouette dress dripping in diamond accessories. This was the first time we really started taking notice of her budding signature style. And in 2007, she attended her first Grammys and stunned in this emerald dress. And just a month later, she secured her status as an icon in both fashion and music when her hit single Umbrella was released and shot her into superstardom. I mean, everyone and their mom and their grandma was singing Umbrella that summer. I know you remember. <laughs> We saw her serving sexy French made realness with ballet shoes, edgy leather peplums, body suits topped with fedora hats and fingerless gloves. We love to see it. The following year, we saw her win her very first Grammy Award and in the next year, 2009, we saw her completely transform as she stepped into the rated R era and she definitely lived up to the good girl gone bad image she was singing about. This was her darkest, edgiest era yet with rock inspired music on the album and outfits that reflected just that. She also shaved her head and of course fans, including me, <laughs> followed suit and that became one of the biggest hair trends of that time. At that year's Met Gala, she turned heads in this Dolce & Gabbana suit and definitely stole the show and stood out in a sea of gowns. I think this was the start of what would become her long list of show-stopping Met Gala moments, but we'll get into that a little more later. Now that Rihanna reign did not let up one bit as we entered the 2010s. This was her loud era and she started rocking the red hairdo. Her singles from that album Only Girl in the World and s and became huge hits as well as her joint hit with Drake on What's My Name where she gave us Beetlejuice chic in the striped jacket. This video was also one of their first of many catchy collaborations which would later include songs like Take Care and Work. Now between 2010 and 2012, Rihanna was riding the wave of her successes and she snagged endorsement deals left and right. She became the face of fashion brands like Armani's denim and underwear campaigns for their fall winter 2011 campaigns. That same year, she released her Talk That Talk album. In late 2012, she let the world know that she was on her grown woman status with the release of Unapologetic, which became her first number one album and it gave us hits like Pour It Up, Diamonds, and Stay. Diamonds was a major moment. She performed the hit at the Victoria's Secret Fashion Show and gave me my entire life in this black corset gown with this thigh high slit, finished off with lace gloves, fishnets, a pearl choker, and pearl sunglasses. I mean, no detail was left out. Now, can we talk about Pour It Up though? I mean, come on, who could ever forget Riri in this bleach blonde wig, a denim thong, floor sweeping faux fur coat, blinged out lingerie, and dollar bills flowing everywhere. Can we also talk about this all black and gold leather look? I mean, I'm just obsessed with the whole thing. Her and her style team, they definitely did that. 
Now, like I said earlier, the Rihanna reign did not let up because in 2014, she was officially named a fashion icon by the CFDA and she came to accept her award in this Adam Selman dress covered in 250,000 Swarovski crystals and a faux fur. That same year, she became the brand ambassador for Puma, which led to her first real venture into being a designer and creative director for a brand with the Fenty Puma collaboration. This collaboration spawned award-winning suede creepers, those fur slides, you know, the ones that everybody had, and all-around chic athleisure. If she wasn't already in the fashion books by this point, she made sure of it when she showed up to the 2015 Met Gala in this jaw-dropping dress by Chinese designer Gua Pei. The dress not only took 20 months to make, but it weighed a whopping 55 pounds, but she strutted down that red carpet with ease and elegance only in the way that Rihanna can. Rihanna continued slaying us with amazing looks on and off the red carpet, but three years went by without an album from her until she dropped Anti in 2016, and needless to say, it was received very well. Rolling Stone magazine called it, quote, a sprawling masterpiece of psychedelic soul, end quote. Later on that year, she accepted the Michael Jackson Video Vanguard Award at the 2016 MTV VMAs, and we'll never forget how Drake professed his love for her right before presenting her with the award, but I digress, we're here to talk about fashion. <laughs> Anyways, Rihanna launched her Fenty Beauty Cosmetics line in 2017 to much acclaim, but little did we know that Fenty fashion was right around the corner. We'll get into that in just a bit. Her focus shifted from music to her business endeavors, and she stole the show once again at the 2018 Met Gala by wearing a bedazzled Maison Margiela by Jean Galliano gown, Stephen Jones millinery hat crafted in the style of the Pope's tiara, and of course, matching Louboutins on the feet. In 2018, she ushered in a new era of fashion with the launch of her Savage Fenty lingerie line. The Savage Fenty line took the world by storm because unlike other lingerie brands, <clears throat> Victoria's Secret, this one celebrates fearlessness, confidence, and inclusivity. The fashion show was not your typical one either. It was more so a concert with models and performances at Barclays Center, where Riri came out of semi-retirement to bless us with a performance. The audience wasn't allowed to use their phones at the event, which created even more buzz and mystery around the show until it was released to all of us on Amazon Prime Video 10 days later. But don't think she stopped there. In 2019, Rihanna made history by launching her very own Fenty Full Fashion label, making her the first woman of color to head a fashion house for luxury fashion group, LVMH, which stands for Moet Hennessy, Louis Vuitton. And if you don't know who that is and you love fashion, stop what you're doing right now and Google them because they own all your faves, including Fendi, Gucci, Dior, Celine, Marc Jacobs, Louis V, of course, and many, many more. LVMH hasn't launched a new brand since Christian Lacroix in 1987, so this is a big deal, like a major deal in fashion history, and for it to be by a black woman, even more iconic. Everything that I learned in the past was to lead me up to this moment. I first started off with being, being the endorser of brands and just lending my, my likeness and my face to fashion brands and then I started collaborating with them whether it was on a sunglass with Dior then I went to Puma and I had a much bigger role there I got to design and have people really see what I'm made of as a designer and really just respect the work that we did it's new I, I've never done anything like this this is completely different this is like from scratch she brought on her stylist Jaleel Weaver as the brand style director who moved to Paris to head up Fenty when Rihanna first told me I was moving to Paris, I was excited for her. I was excited for what it meant for for so many people, like big outside of us, you know. Being the, f the first person kind of hired, and then shortly after me there was uh, the managing director. So it was really two of us in the in the very very beginning, kind of in a small office, just figuring out all the things that we needed to put into place and start to build a team. Having a, a, a beautiful team of, of diversity among her staff, it's something new, it's fresh, and it's, it's opening doors for so many people, like myself, and saying that you can be anywhere and, and be a part of this, you know, to be a part of this world and to feel like you're also represented in a space that 
maybe you didn't feel that way. She quickly started expanding the Fenty fashion empire by adding a jewelry collection called Camaro, and most recently in July of 2020, she announced that she will be adding shoes to the Fenty repertoire through a collaboration with designer Amina Muadi. In addition to that, she announced that Fenty Beauty will now have skincare, so there is truly no stopping this woman. She is a force to be reckoned with, and she's making her mark across all industries, not just music, but fashion beauty, accessories, and I truly cannot wait to see what's next for Rihanna. That's how I am. I'm, I want everybody's input. The most fulfilling part is to see the idea realized, to see it come to life in a real tangible piece. So Rihanna is clearly very busy, so stop asking her for an album. <laughs> she is way too busy dominating the world for all that. So tell me what you think about this video down below. I hope you learned something new and I want to hear from you. What was your favorite Rihanna fashion era? If you enjoyed watching this video, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you back here next time. Bye!